And now joining us in the studio for more on the upcoming September elections, please welcome political analyst and former Likud Knesset member Naftali Ben-Simon and Mark Schulman, columnist for Newsweek and the editor of HistoryCentral.com. So let's begin. Let's talk about the polls. Bibi is now working to get Otsma uh, to resign from the race, just like Feiglin. And other right-wing parties agree that that would be the sensible thing to do. Will this work? What is your take? I don't think it's going to make any difference. We've seen that the Feiglin resignation has not had any impact so far in terms of Netanyahu's poll numbers. Uh, you know, he got Kahlon to resign and join the Likud. It was zero effect. As a matter of fact, a negative effect. The result is that Likud was down and the Kahlon voters have disappeared completely. Probably went to Lieberman, although we don't know for sure. So the reality is nothing he has done has really worked. And he's basically stuck at the same 30, 31, 32, depending on the poll. And he can't get to 60, it looks like, without Lieberman. And if he can't get to 60 without Lieberman, it means he has no government. He has no government. It means at some point or another, um, his days are numbered. There are a few facts that we have to understand when we are talking about the Israeli elections. Uh, the cannibalism will start only uh, one week before the election. Everyone will try to eat everyone and especially the Likud party, who will try to almost crush the right wing and Otsma and other parties to get more and more mandates because this, the key question is who will get even one more mandate? Is blue and white or the Likud? Who will be invited to the president to form a, a government? So in my opinion, the polls now are almost a, a, a balance, a 50-50, mm -hmm. but it, I think the real action will start next week or maybe 10 days from now, uh, and then we will see mm -hmm. the, the real fight. I think though, there's two things. One is, remember, the law does, it doesn't say that it's the largest party, it's the party with the greatest chances of forming a government. That's right. the party that has the most recommendations. So who Lieberman is going to recommend is going to be key here in making that decision. And Lieberman has made it clear he will only recommend the first party that agrees to a coalition government. So we'll see how that works out. Number two, look, again, it's, it's a sense, it's a feeling, but it's a feeling that this time the gewalt that I may lose the, the, may lose the government may not work because I think a lot of people are saying, well, maybe in, in terms of the right, mm -hmm. well, maybe Netanyahu will lose, but the right might not lose. And I think there's that sort of sense. There's a certain sense of tiring of going through this again and again and again. The Gewalt has worked once, it's worked twice. Gewalt being the Yiddish term for the sky is falling, the sky is falling. We're going to lose the right-wing government. And that's worked previously. I don't think it's going to work as well this time. Yeah. So we'll have to see, but I think it's going to be very hard. Yeah, this whole election is, is about one man, Avigdor Lieberman. He's the key person of this election. He's the man of the hour. And it's not the Prime Minister Netanyahu, and it's not Benny Gantz. And he will maybe, for the first time, will decide who, what kind of government we will have and who will be the next Prime Minister. And this is amazing because to see Lieberman from a position of five, five mandates becoming the key person of this election, this is uh, unprecedented and this is really something that uh, it uh, shows a lot about this brilliant politician, Avigdor Lieberman. Well, but so, so, so something that you know, I kind of wanted to point out, though, is that Lieberman's vote, one way or the other, is powerful here. But either way, Kaholavan needs the Likud's numbers to create the government, and the Likud would need Kaholavan's numbers. Bringing us to the question of a coalition, is there a chance? Well, the only, the only chance for coalition, again, is if, if Prime Minister Netanyahu is replaced inside the Likud. You're hearing those rumblings, you're hearing those talk. You know, they always said that not one person was ever willing to go up against Netanyahu, but if it was a group of them, you know, Netanyahu better watch out. You know, the king, when you go up against the king, you've got to make sure you're going to win I, against the king. I will take a risk and I will say that if Prime Minister Netanyahu, we will not have a, the ability to form a, a government of the right, he will not be the next Prime Minister of Israel. Even if we will have a larger or unity government, in any scenario besides of his own government, the uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu will not be the next Prime Minister. Well, so what, what, about, what about the third option where there is no coalition? We go to thir the third election. No way, way. No, no, no way, no way, no way. There's no reason to think it's going to change. Let's keep in mind something else that Lieberman did, why he was so brilliant. 
He picked on the area that most Israelis agree with. 68% of Israelis want a government without the religious parties. And one of the, I think, uh, disastrous decisions that Netanyahu made was putting Rafi Peretz as the education minister. Because Rafi Peretz as the education minister represented everything that Israelis don't want to see as an education minister. Yes, Bennett was from the religious party also, but Bennett was something else altogether. He wasn't a rabbi, he talked about math, he talked about all those sort of things. Rafi Peretz was exactly what the average uh, non-religious Israeli does not want to see as their education minister, and that's united yeah. people in saying, we want a government without them. One more, one more comment. comment. Uh, it's not that uh, uh, Lieberman uh, don't want to see the religious parties in the government. He, he's not against Judaism. He's not against, uh, uh, they, they say that he makes some uh, uh, anti-Semitic uh, uh, comments or something like that. No, this is not the case. For the first time, we have a brave politician who said uh, uh, politicians, ultra-Orthodox politicians, and Judaism does not go work together. All right, so and that we brings, have to separate. Well, that brings us to the, the final question. You're going to have to give us short answers on this one. How do you think Lieberman will vote? Well, Lieberman, I think, will go with Kachol Avan, assuming that they agree to a coalition. He's going to be a man of his word in this particular case. Um, I don't think it makes a difference whether Kochola has 30, 31, 29, 33. It's not really relevant. I think the chances are very, very high that they get the first mandate to try to form a government, because I don't think Netanyahu mm -hmm. can form that government. But we, have, we have a political crisis in Israel, and I think that only a unity government can solve this problem. It can change the political system, because until now, it doesn't work. All right. Well, thank you both so much for coming in. I guess we're going to just have to wait and see what happens, right? As per usual, elections thank are coming so up much. on September 17th. Mark Shulman, Natalie Ben-Simon, thank, thank you, you so very much. much.